untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a black green obliterator fight deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Phyrexian Obliterator is back in standard, 4 mana, 5-5 five, five, trampler, saying whenever a source deals damage to Phyrexian Obliterator, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents, so it can punish opposing creatures for blocking it, and of course we can also combine it with our own fight effects to force the issue, and we've got 4 copies of Tail Swipe in this list, a 1 mana instant that can give our creature plus 1 plus 1 before fighting if we cast it in our main phase, but we also have the advantage of casting it at instant speed during the opponent's turn, when they're maybe tapped out and don't expect a fight effect to happen, and then a two copies of Bushwhack, which can have the flexibility of searching up a basic land as well to help hit our land drops, and then otherwise a one mana sorcery speed fight effect. So those plus Obliterator can often decimate the opponent's board, but it will take a pretty specific matchup for Obliterator to be at its best, especially opposing red and green decks, which often don't have removal for Obliterator without damaging it first, are going to be where we want to draw the Obliterator plus fight spell. And then the rest of our deck has mainly black cards, since of course we need quadruple black for Obliterator, so we're not going to be playing a ton of green cards. And as you take a look at the mana base, we only have a black green dual lands as our green sources, so there's no risk of drawing a basic forest and not being able to play Obliterator on turn 4. And then the rest of our deck is kind of your typical black mid-range deck with a couple new additions with two copies of Phyrexian Arena, a 3-mana enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep you draw a card and lose one life, so another nice source of card advantage. And if we have a Shieldred in play we will gain two life whenever we draw, so that can make up for the lost life from Phyrexian Arena. And then we also have two copies of Glissa, Sunslayer, another payoff for playing Black Green specifically, a 3-3 with First Strike and Death Touch, so incredibly difficult for the opponent to block. And then whenever Glissa deals combat damage to a player, we get to either draw a card at the cost of one life, destroy an enchantment, or remove up to three counters from a target permanent, which can also be quite versatile. Maybe remove some counters from an opposing Reckoner Bankbuster, or remove loyalty counters of opposing Planeswalkers can also come up. And then we've got some of the usual suspects at 1 mana full set of Evolved Sleeper, which also benefits from having a heavy black mana base, as we can level it up over time, first into a 2-2, then a 3-3 Death Touch, and eventually put a counter on it and draw a card for each time we activate it for 3 mana, so another nice mana sink similar to Glissa and Fraxin Arena. And then having these aggressive one drops can also complement our game plan with Obliterator nicely, as in matchups where we don't have a fight to set up, at least Obliterator is still a 5 5 trampler that can deal quite a bit of damage, so then we want to back that up with more aggressive creatures where the sleeper will come in handy. And then at 2 mana we've got some more creatures with Misery's Shadow, 2-2, two, two, that can grow for every mana we spend pumping it, and then also exiles opposing creatures if they would die, which can be helpful. And then a Tenacious Underdog, a 3-2, that we can also blitz out of the graveyard at the cost of 2 life. So as you can see, a lot of our early creatures still provide a lot of utility in the late game, between Sleeper, Misery Shadow and Underdog. And then at 3 mana we've got our two copies of a Graveyard Trespasser, giving us some Graveyard Hate and Life Gain as well, to offset the life loss from some of our card advantage. And if it ever transforms to Knight, can turn into a 4-4 that exiles multiple cards when it attacks. And then at 4 mana, as we mentioned, two copies of Shieldred, and topping off our curve, full set of Invoke Despair, which just fits in naturally in a deck trying to cast a quadruple black obliterator, can be an answer to Planeswalkers, as we don't have any real spot removal spells for Planeswalkers in the main deck, since we're not making room for Shieldred's Edict, which could otherwise fit in nicely, and this can also answer opposing enchantments, besides just drawing more cards and dealing damage. And then our spot removal includes four copies of Cutdown as just a cheap answer, since the deck is designed for best of one where aggressive creature decks are quite popular, thinking of Mono Red Aggro and Blue White Soldiers, where you want to have that one mana removal. And then a two copies of Go for the Throat to complement our fight spells. So our deck can play kind of a fair mid-range game, but every now and then Obliterator plus our fight spells will line up to hopefully take over. And then a mana base, just a lot of black green dual lands, most of which are untapped late game. And then 11 basic swamps and the abandoned mire to maybe channel and get back something from the graveyard. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not amazing, but keepable. Early removal into a shieldred. Now it's uh, a little bit better. Turn 1 Evolved Sleeper, which we can start leveling up. Facing turn 1 Forests. Field of Ruins, Scramp Gorger. Alright, so cut down Scramp Gorger, level up Sleeper attack. 
best case scenario, finds our Phyrexian Arena next turn to start drawing extra cards. Kalissa would be great too, Trespasser. Opponent ramping with a Stomper, so it could be a mono green deck with Nissa as kind of its finisher, which can be quite scary. For now, probably prefer playing Underdog over leveling up Sleeper. And then Shieldred on 4 at least is going to stick around. So the message in this matchup is try and apply as much pressure as possible, get them low, so Shieldred can finish them off before Anissa kills us on the way back. Stomper very good in multiples. Can at least kill one of them. And then Bushwhack plus Shieldred can also take out a Stomper. Opponents has got their own Bushwhack, gets a Forest. So up to six lands already. Next turn, Stomper is active. And they might have another fight effect, Audacity instead, to give it plus two and trample, that's fine. So, still gonna attack and then play Shieldred. And then Shieldred blocks the smaller Stomper. Although, opponent could just play Nissa here, give the team plus six, plus six. Which would force us to jump with Shieldred. Well, I guess it would be a trade. Five forests is only plus five plus five. They could also decide to field the Verun or Deathcap Glade, and I'm not playing a basic forest, so that could take us off green mana, unfortunately. If her opponent goes with the uh, ramp spell making a bunch of drides and then plays Nissa, we'll certainly be dead, but nope, Nissa minus seven. So, yeah, that is a lethal attack, but we can survive it by trading Shieldred. Could also trade with a larger Stomper, I guess. Opponent will get to draw, but so be it. So we're at five. And then now we probably bushwhack, get a Swamp to keep hitting our land drops. And go for the Throat Stomper, and level up Sleeper. And hit for six. Not dead on the way back to the Mishra's Foundry. And hopefully we can cross the finish line. Another Stomper. So if I level up Sleeper, then I could Tail Swipe to take it out. And Azusa's many journeys is fine. Alright, let's hope they don't field of ruin me. Get to untap. So level up sleeper, draw card. And now I can float the green mana, so we're good even if they field of ruin in response. And Foundry will have to uh, chum block here, but that's not going to be enough to survive. Okay, sweet. Very close one here against uh, Mono Green Ramp deck, but Nissa Ultimate was not quite enough to win the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands decent. Could use an extra land or two, but double sleeper will be a nice mana sink. Opponent with a Fusling, turn one. Okay. Could trade it off for Evolved Sleeper since we have more coming up. A research desk, okay. Also has a bit of synergy if they sacrifice it here. As a Fuseling picks up an extra oil counter. And a Liliana of the Veil, what they revealed. I'll take the trade. Next turn they could play Liliana, which... If it kills Underdog, we're not too upset, since we'll eventually get it back. A fight? And then next turn, Sleeper, level up, keep up Tail Swipe for what it's worth. And then turn 4, we might Blitz an Underdog. And then I should maybe level up now, although Cut Down would still kill it regardless. So, can't think of a real reason to do it now. Okay, Fable. 
Won't be able to tail swipe right now since we don't get the plus one plus one. But uh, could take it out next turn. And that also allows us to take out Liliana. Opponent may not even plus one if they like their hand. So level up Sleeper. Take our draw step. And then go for the throat over tail swipe is also an option if we want to save it for Obliterator. Are there larger creatures that we might need to go for the throat for? Maybe an opposing Shieldred, or well, I guess Obliterator could also be in their deck. So, we'll use a Tail Swipe. And then we can level up Sleeper once again. Although, could also do that in the opponent's turn in case we want to go for the Throat instead. Okay, and then Invoke Despair will deal with the enchantments. As well as maybe a creature they play. Opponent discarding another research desk, which can also be unearthed. And another Fable. Alright, in that case, do we kill the creature? I think we still go for the throat here, just so Invoke Despair will draw two cards as opposed to one. Although that might be a bit of a waste. Yeah, opponent's probably still going to play creatures later. So we'll level up Sleeper instead. Still a good use of our mana. And then Invoke Despair is still quite powerful here. Getting rid of the Shaman and Fable. We'll see which one they keep. Attack for three. Draw card. Okay, opponent kept the older Fable, which we can answer with a Gopher to throw it now. And Bushwhack in case Obliterator shows up. Alright, another Liliana, probably gonna minus two. In which case, Blitz Underdog, go for the throat. Still answers the Planeswalker. Okay, Anvil. I guess they don't have an artifact that they're willing to sacrifice, so it's not gonna provide an extra blocker. So yeah, Blitz Underdog. And then have to go for the throat, unless we want to attack and see if they want to chump with Reflection. I imagine they're gonna let Liliana go. So in that case, am I better off? Blitzing Underdog and, let's say, play Sleeper level up. It's kind of risky for opponent plays like a Blood Tithe Harvester next turn with Reflection. So, might as well not give them the choice. Now Anvil is a bit concerning as a late game kind of uh, engine that will make a bunch of 1-1s. So we'd love to find some of our top-end cards like Shieldred and Obliterator to try and take over. But Evolve Sleeper is not bad either as a mana sink. And Underdog will draw here. Finding a Death Cap Glade. So don't hate our spots as it currently stands, but if our opponent has their own 4 or 5 drop, that could quickly change. Another research desk. Okay. So they've got quite a bit of card advantage going into the late game. And looks like they found a harvester at long last. But opponent prefers a land. And an Obnixilus with Casualty. Alright, makes sense. And then, probably okay losing two life and keeping the land for the time being. At least Anvil didn't do anything. And then if I were to Blitz Underdog... And then Tail Swipe to get the extra plus one. It doesn't die to the Devil dealing one damage. And we can take out Obnixilus. That seems good. Probably could have played a Death Camp Glade, but I'm going to use that for mana as well here once we play Sleeper. And then the token Planeswalker is also better to take out in case they draw another Obnixilus, since this one's not legendary. My Although in this case it also just has more loyalty, so that's an easy choice. 
Okay, play Sleeper. Can level up end of turn. And we'll get to draw. Just a lance, which we may end up discarding here to Obnixilus to stay at a healthier life total. Opponent unearthing. A research desk goes digging. Anvil makes a 1 1. And a synthesizer, that's more card advantage coming up. Finds a land. Okay. So we'll discard our swamp. <laughs> Your punishment is my entertainment. And a Phyrexian Arena is a little bit painful here, not gonna lie. I can Blitz Underdog and play Arena. That way we guarantee take out Obnixilus, which is probably necessary. Alternatively, we could bushwhack, kill the 1-1, one -one, opponent will sack in a response, take out Obnixilus, play Arena, and then I can still level up Sleeper to a 3-3. Or we can just go for Underdog Blitz, down to 7, play Arena, and hope uh, that we're not going to die to our own card advantage here. That's also reasonable. Opponent is still at 17, so we better find a shieldred soon to make that life back. No one beats me and, survives. and then hang on to bushwhack as opposed to playing it to get a land, which was also an option. Alright, there's our obliterator, so hopefully our opponent plays a large creature now, since the artifact token they can easily sack to anvil in response. Cut down sleeper. That's too bad. Synthesizer makes a 2-2 Samurai, so that one we can at least fight with Obliterator, make them sacrifice two other cards. Down to six. Now five with Arena. And yeah, the Anvil's gonna start ending up soon. So it's still Lava Shieldred. Trespasser also very helpful, and Shieldred. Okay. So I'll wait on Obliterator, since there's not a huge creature to fight. Play a Trespasser, gain a life back. And Exiling Harvester. And then Shieldred, if it sticks around, will quickly gain a lot of life with the Phyrexian Arena. Could make the argument that baiting out removal with Obliterator was better. But I don't know if we have the time to wait. Alright, the research desk once again goes digging. Triggers Anvil to make a 1 1. And the voltage surge is not enough. They can take out my Trespasser if they'd like. So our opponent goes for Vran, which we can fight with a bushwhack. And another of Nixilis. Wow. Okay. So now. They can force us to discard a bunch. Although opponent is on empty now. We have two blockers. So at most they can deal one damage with a creature going through one more from Anvil. So yeah, I guess that means I can't afford to uh, keep both cards in hand. So between Bushwhack and Obliterator. Probably preferred uh, Bushwhack actually to take out Vran. Since that's gonna start ending up very quickly. So that's too bad. So we'll lose one, but gain two. Find a replacement obliterator. That's good. And a cut down. Okay, so we're gonna have a nice turn here. Obliterator, cut down bushwhack. Trespasser attacks, gains another life. Of ran down and sacrifice two more permanents. At this point, they can get rid of some lands pretty easily. 
Okay, and then next step, move to combat. And should be safe to attack with Shieldred as well. So it's unclear which Planeswalker to attack with which creature, but we'll try it this way. And then I could also exile the opponent's um, research desk now, that we have a healthier life total and I'm less afraid of getting burnt out. Okay, so I can take out the Samurai and then Trespasser survives. So that's what we'll do. There's still double Obnixilus that will drain us for four next turn. So I think we're actually still dead here between all the damage from the Devil and the Anvil. Double Obnixilus with no cards in hand should do it. Tried our best. But uh, yeah, just enough life drain here to take us out before we manage to stabilize. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems keepable. Just a good curve of creatures to apply some early pressure, and then hopefully we'll find our curve toppers later. Opponent on either mono white aggro or blue white soldiers. So, turn one sleeper. Could trade it off for the officer. Although, could make for a nice mana sink late game. Alright, now we don't get the chance to. So, we'll take three. Cut down's nice. Now I could play Misery Shadow first to exile the veteran once we cut down. Although if we exile, of course, we won't have food for the Trespasser later. Yeah, I guess since we have Trespasser to exile veteran once we kill it, I might prefer just uh, cut down, level up sleeper. And preserve our life total. Opponent forced to run out Iganjo implies they don't have a lot of basics left. Laid on arms with only a single plane is actually enough here. So that works. And then we'll still be taking out the veteran. So we'll take a bit of damage. And a Thalia the follow-up. Not a big deal here. We'll play Trespasser, Exile, Valiant Veteran. And technically Trespasser could hold off the incoming attacks. Brutal Cathar will have to discard to remove Trespasser. And then Misery Shadow can grow up to a 4-4. Can still play defense quite well. So don't hate my spot. Tail swipe. Could take out Brutal Cathar, get back Trespasser. Yeah, that's probably worth it. As opposed to saving it for an eventual obliterator. This just stabilizes my board immediately. And our opponent explodes. That was a quick one. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and sadly only a one-lander, so we're gonna have to mulligan. This is better. And then might have to let go of one of the four drops, or I can hope to uh, draw lands with Glissa once we connect. And in that case we don't need Lenor Wastes. Up against the red-green, so that's a good sign for Phyrexian Obliterator. Can play and level up Sleeper. Pretty efficient here. Okay, so play Glissa, and then do we want to attack with a Sleeper? Not really, we'll just hang back. I guess Red Green, we should be able to take over the late game, so just want to make sure we don't get run over. In case they kill Glissa here. Okay, Bloated Contaminators, quite large, but still doesn't attack past our first striking Death Touch creature. So, 
Now we could attack with Glissa to try and hit our land drop. If we draw land, great. If not, maybe go for Misery Shadow. Could also destroy an enchantment and take out the etching, but drawing seems more important. Okay, found an underdog. Yeah, I guess maybe underdog's better than shadow. Can still trade for, let's say, pack leader or etching. Would get exiled by the etching, that's the one downside. Thundering Raichu, yeah, that's a good one too. So Contaminator proliferating the plus one counters is going to be quite scary. So I could double block Contaminator, take it out and not let them proliferate. Sure, take eight. And then... Yeah, hope to draw land for Obliterator here. Perfect. And then now we can turtle up, keep Glissa back. And now they're going to have a bad time attacking into the Obliterator, unless they can kill us on the spot, which may very well be possible if they take out Glissa here. Ooh, Miglos, okay. Another large creature, and our opponent passes. So we'll play Shieldred and uh, pass it back, since I'm not in a position to turn Obliterator sideways. Sadly, don't have the fight spell to really take over here. Migloss also counts as a modified creature for Raichu purposes. So, land for Invoke Despair would be great. And of course a fight spell would probably win us the game. Okay. So for now Invoke Despair. Opponent can sack Etching as kind of both their creature and enchantment, so they don't have to sacrifice an additional creature to it. But at least Shieldred will get to draw and gain some life. Alright. Still happy to hang back. Opponent is at 11, so they're kind of close to that if we get aggressive, but I should at least wait until we can untap and play more blockers. Opponent firing off a play with fire here. So they're aggressively digging for something. Another contaminator. Yeah, they still don't have the best attacks. And now with a go for the throat, I'm feeling a lot safer. I could try to attack with just Glissa, since I have a backup to play on defense. Could also remove counters from Miglaws or some of their creatures. If I remove two counters from Pack Leader, we can kill it with Cutdown as well, which could also be relevant. So, think attack with Glissa. If I also attack with Obliterator, I guess we would force them to block it, since otherwise they would die to Shieldred in their next turn. And if they block Obliterator, they're gonna end up losing a ton of permanence. So maybe Obliterator can turn sideways as well here. And it looks like our opponent may have given up here. So these attack. And the opponent seems to have disconnected, so we can draw. And then deal five more, and then they'll die to Shieldred here in a second. So, backup Glissa, not really necessary. Alright, just gotta wait for this last trigger to resolve, and we'll be on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands could use some cheaper cards that we can actually play to impact the board. But uh, can I say no to Shield Roots into Invoke Despair? I don't think so. Turn 1 Forests. And there's an Underdog to play on turn 2. Doesn't seem like I need to bushwhack for a basic yet. Ooh, opponent on the blue-green poison deck, I see. That's kind of scary. Um... 
Still probably go for Underdog, and then next turn we can try and fight uh, Rot Priest. Although I'm sure opponent has some protection in place. Opponent passes. So, step one, attack. And then I'll attempt to bushwhack and fight. Although, honestly, we could just keep hitting our land drops. And then invoke the spares away to kill Rot Priest without getting any poison. Maybe prefer that, actually. And then Sleeper level up, still blocks Rot Priest profitably. So let's find another Swamp. That way we're guaranteed Shieldred into a double Invoke Despair. Opponent's got a Green March to get another Rot Priest. Yeah, that's pretty scary. So now they have two in play. And a Storm Chaser Drake, that one's fine. They could still have a Blue March to eventually apply a lot of poison and draw. For now, I think uh, attack with what we have and play Shieldred. Possible they have a pump spell for the Drake, but doesn't seem like they're going for it. So now they can sack a Drake to an Invoke Despair, but the clock is ticking. They need to poison us pretty soon here. Another March gets a third Rot Priest. Yeah. So not loving my chances anymore. Obliterator cannot fight, so an Invoke Despair seems more fitting. We'll see if they get rid of the Drake, which clears a blocker. Opponent is at 6. So if I attack with all, opponent certainly has to chump with one of the priests, but they might actually have to chump with both, since uh, Shieldred will drain them for 2 in their upkeep. So unless they can at instant speed maybe kill me before taking a draw step with double Rod Priest in play, we should be okay to attack, as opposed to leaving a blocker back for incoming attacks. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Double Sleeper, which we can sink our mana into. Double Cutdown against any aggressive creature decks. And then hopefully find more action. Well, let's see what we're up against. Planes into Officer. Okay, so Soldiers or Mono White Aggro. Should be a good matchup for double cutdown at least. So I don't really want to trade Sleeper for an Officer. So I think the plans play another Sleeper and pass. Leaving up cutdown for maybe a more valuable 2-drop like the Veteran that we might want to take out. If not, level up Sleeper. And we'll take two. Okay, so there's Blue White Soldiers and now a Thalia. So we'll have to spend two mana to take that out next turn. Although we don't have to. It's not like Thalia is a huge threat. Now I don't think I want to outrace the Soldiers deck by attacking with both my Sleepers, but we can keep one back as it threatens to turn into a 3-3, and then just attack with the 2-2 Sleeper. That seems fine. And then pass with our instance available. Okay, opponent runs out Denik. That's acceptable. So they don't have any good attacks. Now I could remove one of their creatures end of turn, or I can just level up and wait for now. And we're in a similar spot as last turn. This time maybe attack with a 3-3 Sleeper in case a Brutal Cathar tries to remove our better blocker. Although we can always kill it before it exiles, so our creature stays in play. So yeah, Sleeper attacks. With double cut down we shouldn't really be punished in any way. 
Gordon takes it. And we'll pass. Right, there's veteran to pump the team, so that's fine. We'll let them attack if they want to and set up an ambush. Alright, so cut down veteran, level up sleeper up to 3-3, three, three, kill Thalia for free. Seems good. And then now... Probably still only attack with one of them. And I might also just uh, get it up to 4 power to draw immediately. And there's shield root, perfect. So yeah, we had a pretty much ideal draw for this blue-white soldiers matchup. Opponent also missing land drops, admittedly. But uh, yeah, one mana removal spells backed up by a threat that we can sink mana into, or if we eventually found a shield root or obliterator, that could have done the job as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, hand seems fine. Sleeper on one, turn two, level up, play a tap land. And then uh, Bushwhack can help hit our land drops as well if necessary. Put in blue-green, and I imagine this will be another poison deck, given all the mulligans. There's Rot Priests. I imagine they have a protection spell in place, so not expecting cut down to work. So do I even want to attack? Now nah, we'll stay back. Plan to level up Sleeper. Let them make the first move if they try and use a green march to copy Rot Priest, we can kill it in response. Okay, second Rot Priest means I probably have to pull the trigger now before they get more poison. And our opponent did indeed have a slip out the back. Fair enough. Level up Sleeper, opponent gets their Priest. But now we can at least use Bushwhack to kill another Rot Priest without getting two poisons, since the other Rot Priest is still phased out. Or we can just play Trespasser, so the 2-3 can also be blocked. Sure. And then uh, attack with a Sleeper. Opponent's down to one card in hand, so... They'll need some help off the top to stand a chance. So no attacks, transforms to Knight, and now we can either play Shieldred or Obliterator. Obliterator has higher upside if we can fight the opposing Rot Priest, I guess. So start by attacking. No real need to exile cutdown, but no downside either. Alright, let's see if we can set up a fight with a Bushwhack. Not the easiest matchup to do so, since our opponent can easily protect our Rot Priest. It's gonna be a Storm Chaser Drake. Okay, one card remaining. And then now... What's the correct move? Probably start by attacking. See what the response is. And then maybe set up a Bushwhack. Although I don't have high hopes. Opponent chumps. And they go for a Tyvar stand to make indestructible, draw a card, and apply two poison. Fair enough, but now they're tapped out and Bushwhack can kill the larger Rot Priest, making them sack two permanents. And then if I Bushwhack, I can still either level up Sleeper or play another creature out, which is probably better. Opponent's at five. So. Start with a bushwhack. We do get two poison up to six, so that's still kind of scary. But they won't have much left once this is done. Put on sacking Drake and a land. Play probably Misery Shadow since we can haste Underdog next turn if needed. Put it at five. Two cards in hand, and yeah, there's no real combination that can apply four more poison here. Sweet. So we finally got a fight in with our Frex and Obliterator in a matchup that is honestly quite winnable. 
uh, just need to have the early pressure have a little bit of removal hopefully at the right time edict effects like the invoke despair are better than spot removal most of the time we're not playing a Liliana of the Veil, which would be another great tool in that matchup. But after playing the blue-green poison deck myself, and you can check out that video on the official MTG Arena YouTube channel if you haven't already, I don't think the deck is particularly competitive, so don't expect it to stick around on the ranked ladder for too much longer, especially once the novelty wears off and people get bored of poisoning others to death. So overall, we got a glimpse at this Phyrexian Obliterator fight deck, which has its moments, especially against red and green creature decks. You get a chance to actually fight something substantial with Obliterator to decimate the opponent's board, but against the other half of the color pie, Obliterator can just be a 4-mana 5-5, which is pseudo-unblockable, which can sometimes be good enough. In other matchups, you would prefer having other tools, so it's very matchup dependent, but as I've said, can be a lot of fun when it works out. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.